Okay, so I was saying that in general, we can distinguish between uh, uh, two kinds of approaches. The first one is called for making. The second one is called uh, form finding. In the form making approach, basically we have a preconceived idea. We have a basic idea of what we want to get. And basically we just have to define the dimensions of an object. Let's say the bridge that we are going to see in the, in the screen right now. Um, we have a set of columns. We have the, the street deck. So the in in this kind of designing, in uh, also if we want to calculate uh, from an engineering point of view uh, the bridge itself, we already have the shape and the unknowns. They are basically the elements dimensions. So for example, the cross section of uh, beams uh, over here, or the cross section of the pillars in uh, um, in this direction. So in general. Uh, this is a problem where the shape is already given. We already know that we want to create a set of, of columns and a deck on top of it. And the unknowns are the elements dimensions. There is another approach, which is called form finding. We, um, you already know that we are a lot of like pioneers of form finding strategies like uh, um, Gaudi, for example, Heinz Isler, Frey Otto, and Sergio Musmeci itself, among others. This kind of this approach, such an approach, is completely different because it's like a kind of inversion of the traditional form making approach. Actually, in this new uh, methodology, we don't have any kind of already given shape. But basically, we have loads, we have position of supports, and actually the real unknown in this case is the, sh the shape itself. So for example, if we come back to the uh, Sergio Musmeci um, bridge over Basento River in Italy. This is a, once again is a bridge that was designed in the um, late 60s and, um, and like completed in the early 70s. In this case, the shape itself is the unknown of the problem. So the designer in uh, this situation started from a set of loads, um, support position, and so the final shape was uh, found, was not uh was not a like a, um preconceived or a given shape we uh, also have other images that show how for example the final uh, object looks like a kind of tense membrane uh which supports the street uh, uh, the road um deck now this is a very uh, it's a change of paradigm and it's important to see that uh, it's important to understand that in um, when we rely and we work in this kind of with this kind of methodology the so-called form finding um, the traditional tool of architecture and design and I'm talking about uh, the, the the drawing uh, like um, um, analog or digital or digital ones they are no longer uh, tools for um, to understand in a way um, to predict the design outcome. In other words, it's not possible to just draw an object like this. It's not possible to use the traditional drawing as a media for uh, it's not possible to use the traditional drawing as a media for uh, describing this kind of shape. So in the form finding uh, methodology, um, the, the traditional tool for architecture is replaced by analog systems. So I'm sure that you already uh, know that uh, form finding pioneers, they relied on uh, uh, hanging chains or like, for example, soap bubbles or like uh, uh, hanging membranes, something like that. Why? Because in a way, uh, we can say that uh, uh, the form findings, uh, like pioneers, they uh, rejected like the traditional drawings, uh, um, and they look to um, we can say self formation processes in nature um, as a way to organize building it itself. 
so in other in other words like uh, um they aim to investigate like novel and optimized structure uh finding ways to uh create a relationship between like materials shapes and structure so was important for example for them like simulating the behavior of elastic membrane or material um probably the most simple and uh, famous way for like defining uh, um to to analyze and to um understand the form finding approach is the, the so-called catenary uh arc as you probably know the catenary is like a curve which is actually a mathematical curve but can be also like um, idealized like hanging a chain and actually is the curve that uh, um an hanging chain assumes under its own weight and when it's uh, only supported um at its ends so basically if we have a chain we can uh, suspend it at uh, its ends and so this kind of shape emerging so it's important to have um, um a chain which is made by a set of elements that can rotate without any kind of bending resistance so this kind of shape is like an optimized one when i say optimize it means that basically uh we only have uh, um tensile stress we don't have any kind of uh, bending but only tension inside here so if we uh invert this kind of layout so uh this is in general this is called structural inversion um hooks was hook was the the first like uh, talking about this kind of analogy and in uh, structural inversion the shape coming from uh, this uh, inversion which is this one is like a shape which is only if we manage to create for example an arc following this uh, uh, curved trend we will have uh, an object which is uh, subject only to compression so the catenary like this we only have stresses inside they are only tensile stress if we invert the shape we only have compression so what's the main benefit of having only compression in a, a shape like this basically we don't have any kind of or we can reduce the bending moment which is in a way um the main let's say uh enemies enemy for structure and for structures in general so if we can remove we can limit the bending moment we can also um like reduce the object thick uh, thickness um if we go from a simple um like to like this a simple analogy like the catenary to something more complex for example this is a work by heinz isler where you can see um a kind of hanging membrane that was used in order to um predict in a way the behavior, the behavior of a uh, of a big vault that was actually uh, built later on you can see some picture for example here once again the drawing is not a tool allowing us to predict the design outcome it's not possible to just sketch a shape like this so it should be predict with the analog system so hanging chain soap bubble uh, later on, I will show you something that Musmech used in order to uh, define the, the above mentioned bridge. Uh, in general, analog systems that, in a way, they create an um, associative re relationship between materials, shape, and structure. They help the pioneers of form finding in like imagine shapes like that now today we can rely on uh, digital tools and um, uh, the first thing that i say today is like my my love and my interest for tools actually was a consequence of my research and uh, and passion for like the history and uh, uh, of design and architecture so today it's possible allowing um like relying to tools like grasshopper or kangaroo which is a physics um, engine like included embedded inside grasshopper it's possible to in a way to simulate uh the same like form finding methodologies that pioneers used according and relying on um analog systems so if you uh open uh, rhino and grasshopper 
in uh, Rhino 6, we already have a tool which is called Kangaroo. In particular, you will find uh, Kangaroo version 2. Today, we are going to start with Kangaroo 1, which is, the, to be precise, this is called Kangaroo 0.99. You can find it uh, on Food for Rhino. You can download it from Food for Rhino. Um, Kangaroo 1 and Kangaroo 2, they can uh, live together. They can say they can be installed uh, simultaneously on your computer. Uh, I mean, on your uh, grasshopper. And uh, they are similar, of course, but there is some difference. And I prefer to start with Kangaroo One in order to understand the, the, the workflow and how to use uh, this tool in order to um, simulate, let's say, the elastic behavior and uh, physical behavior of objects. There is something to say, which is uh, super important. Um, Kangaroo is not... Um, structural analysis software there is a kind of misconception and sometimes people they uh, and their students mostly they think that is a it's something that replaces structural analysis software like a fem it's not like that uh, actually uh, they are like completely different you have to imagine kangaroo like a physics laboratory when we can simulate once again elastic behavior of like uh, cables, chains, uh, membranes, and so on, in order to predict a shape coming from a form finding process. So it's not a tool allowing us to calculate the formations, it's not a tool uh, which can you that, that we can use for calculate stresses inside um, inside the, the the geometries, for example. There are other kind of tools for that. For example, we have the well known uh, Caramba or Millipede. They are tools for performing um, structural analysis, and there you can put, for example, information and data like uh, um, density, materials, and so on. When we are using uh, Kangaroo, we are in a kind of, let's say, once again, laboratory with a lot of uh, chains and membranes, and we can play with them. Kangaroo is not difficult to use, but we, uh, but it relies on a specific, uh, um, specific workflow that we need to understand. And let's start from a simple cable simulation. So my idea is like to simulate the physical behavior of let's say a cable suspended at A and B, let's say under uh, self-weight. Let's go in Kangaroo. So Kangaroo is a, um, is a, um, a plugin which install a set of subcomponents of the sub tabs with uh, many components inside. Um, basically it is a, we can define in Kangaroo a particle spring system solver. Particle spring system. Why particle? Why spring? Because basically, if we have uh, um, an object like uh, once again, um, like a suspended cable, something like this, we can imagine every kind of object like a set of particles like this, connected by springs something like that well now particles they can be um, they are like points basically they can be fixed for example we can fix this object here and here let's call it a and b and points particles they are also points where we can put external forces something like that or something like that for example kangaroo is a system is an engine sorry that solves this kind of system in order to find an equilibrium state and giving us the final configuration of a particle spring system subject to a set of external forces and anchored to at some points let's do a simple example once again so I'm in a X, Z plan, so the front view in, uh, in Rhino. 
and I'm going to create um, simple, a simple object like this with a planar curve. Okay, I'm doing something like that. Let me. Okay. So the first thing to do is like using a curve component, set one curve, and so we have our curve here. Okay. Now, Kangaroo has a precise workflow to follow. The first thing to do, the first step of this workflow is called discretization. In other words, discretization means that you have a curve, which is a, in general, is a NURBS curve, and you get a set of points and lines from this. Points and lines. There we start with a curve or a surface. And from the discretization step, we are going to get points and lines. Okay. So this is the first step. If we are dealing with curves, the discretization can be done using, for example, there are many ways for doing that, but for example, we can divide curve into a set of points. Let's do, for example, uh, 20. Okay. Uh, divide is not a tool that actually um, split our curves into a set of parts, but just define points. We have to reparameterize this curve. Remember, every time you um, set a curve from Ryan to Grasshopper, it's important to reparameterize the object itself. And we can use a tool which is called shader in order to split this curve into a set of parts okay so if you take a look here as you can see we are getting 20 um we're getting 20 like uh, uh pieces okay But if we are like shattering, so if we are like trimming an original curve with a set of points, we are not actually creating a set of lines between them, but they will still stay like curves. I mean, the single sub object here is a curve is not a line. So another way for creating, instead of doing this um, shattering procedure, is also, for example, to create a polyline through those points. So I can remove this one, polyline. OK. I can turn off the preview of this one. As you can see here, I'm also going to turn off the preview we are getting a set of lines approximating my original curve. If you want to get individual lines, we need to explode this curve like this. OK. And once again, now we are getting a set of lines. always important to use a line component. We can use it like this. So we know that we are generating a set of lines from this. And also, as I told you before, we need to generate lines and points from the first stage. So this one goes here. OK. So let's say that this criticization stage terminates here, and now we have a set of lines and points. The second step is like defining the 
article article spring system let me write it like this okay step number two it means that we have to um, convert lines into springs and points into particles a particle basically is like an object is a point with a load okay so in order to convert lines into springs we can go in a kangaroo forces kangaroo one um, uses this kind of terminology the actions are called forces later on probably we if we have time if we will have time we, i can also show you something about kangaroo 2 in kangaroo 2 they are called uh, goals instead of forces so in kangaroo forces we can find a component which is called springs from line so springs from line creates a set of springs starting from lines now in order to like create this kind of uh, conversion, you just have to connect your lines in connections and rest length. You can trust me and uh, we, you can ignore right now the other inputs like this, okay. Basically now we have the conversion from line to springs. In order to define um, particles, we can go in forces once again. You can find this component called unary force. We can apply, for example, a set of forces at each point like this. Unit Z. Uh, define the direction so we are in the xz plan and we are going in z direction and now i'm putting an arbitrary value in a few minutes i will tell you how to define uh, like uh, let's say real world um, units right now we can put um let's say uh, an arbitrary value there is a misconception in the unary force component if you don't put any kind of input here and you over the mouse you will probably see let me show you something like zero zero minus 9.8 which sounds like gravity acceleration but if you don't if you leave the component like this it doesn't mean that you are simulating the real gravity this is a kind of misconception forces and units are defined in another in a different way so anyway we always need to set the direction and a specific and a, in this case an arbitrary value later on i will show you how to set properly this kind of information so we have we defined um, the springs, we defined particles, uh, we need anchor points because I want that my geometry here um, should be like uh, fixed at its end point. So for example, we can use the end point component. Like this. And like this. So if I turn off a bit the preview of my geometries, as you can see, we have this one and this one, they are our endpoints. We can also like merge them together. And I'm going also to merge the springs and uh, particles like this. So we basically have a merge component for like which gathers together forces and another merge component that uh, merges uh, our like uh, uh, anchor points. Okay, now we need to solve the particle spring system. So if you go in kangaroo and kangaroo again, here you can find kangaroo physics. Okay, this is our main engine. 
once you put kangaroo physics on uh, on the canvas the first thing to do is like right clicking force object and we need to set flatten here anchor points uh, flatten this is a let's this is a let's say a good habit and finally we're going to collect this one here and this one here so it's important that um information like uh, data flows they arrive here in a flattened mode so that's why it's important to every time is once again it's a good habit every time you put kangaroo component on the canvas you need to flatten this one and this one okay um we can ignore settings geometry by default uh, kangaroo simulates the behavior and position and behavior of uh, um, particles. If you want to see the, uh, as a design outcome, also the curve itself, we need to define in geometry, we need to connect the line output here. It's very important to understand that inside geometry, we can only and only put lines or meshes. So inside geometry, we can only put lines or meshes. Actually, meshes, they are a collection of lines. So we can also, if you want, simplify everything. And we could say that in geometry, you can only connect uh, straight lines. So it's not possible to feed the, the geometry input with, for example, a curve or a nerve surface. Then we have a simulation reset here, and we also need to define the simulation according to a time frame, let's say. So if you remember also one week ago, uh, we used we um, used the timer, for example, and also we need a trigger, which is a, a toggle. We can use it, uh, we can use a toggle in order to start and stop our engine. Right click here, interval, as you um, as you probably already know, we can set the timer. For example, let's use 10 milliseconds. It means that every 10 milliseconds, um, Kangaroo will uh, find a um, new position for points and updates the solution. The toggle set to true means that the engine is off because true means that the simulation, yes, it is reset. And then we can connect this one here. As you can see in Windows, this kind of button up appears here. So you can also um, enable and disable the timer by double clicking here. And finally, we can use a curve component in geometry out, and we can turn off the preview of this component here. In this, uh, this way, we don't see the output of particles, but we will only see the output from our curve here, OK? Before like starting the engine, it's important to uh, do a double check in terms of, for example, uh, gravity direction or force direction. For example, we use unit Z because we are in the front plane. And so we can just double click here. And as you can see, we are getting this kind of output. Let me turn off the preview of everything before. So once again, this is the this is the starting configuration. We can also turn off the preview of this one if you want. And then with a double click, you can see So once again, com coming back to the um, to the research of uh, designers like uh, Fray Otto or Sergio Musmeci, uh, probably they today they they prefer to use a tool like Kangaroo compared the uh, instead of using like you know analog system. Kangaroo is a way for simulating once again in this case the elastic behavior of a cable that we are using right now, according to a specific set of forces. One of the main question um, when, when students, they start 
using Kangaroo is, is it physics or not? Does it work according to a like specific law or is it just like a playful system for playing around the shape? Kangaroo actually um, works according to the Hooke's law. Let me show you something and we can also, I can also uh, show you something important to understand how it works basically. Um, okay, so kangaroo basically works according to the to the Hooke's law, which basically um, says that if you have a, an elastic um, spring basically the deformation and so this is the equation which is f which is the applied force k is a constant which is called stiffness and x is the basically is the deformation so we have a direct uh, relationship between uh, uh, the applied force and the um, and the deformation itself. Now, this is this is an example which is very useful uh, in order to understand how to set, for example, um, forces and other kind of properties inside kangaroo. According to the Hooke's law, for example, if we have um, an object like this, which is a cable, A B with a weight on uh, one of its end in B, for example, and we have 100 Newton, for example, here. Uh, our cable is about 80 centimeters. According to the Hooke's law, uh, due to the Hooke's law, which is the formation is equal to F, which is the applied force divided by the stiffness. The stiffness is a property uh, of our like spring. So it depends on uh, cross section, but material, but also length. And so according, for example, to uh, this specific example, uh, to the Hooke's law, we have that deformation is equal to 100 Newton divided by two. Two is the stiffness, which is a datum of our problem. So if our cable has a stiffness of two Newton, divided by centimeter. According to this uh, simple equation, we can find, for example, the deformation of this cable under the applied load of 100 Newton. Now, kangaroo works according to the Hooke's law. So we can, for example, we can simulate this system precisely inside kangaroo and we will get the same deformation of about 50 centimeters. So we can simulate the same thing here. The first thing to do is like, and I want to show you actually how to define the uh, forces, stiffness, for example, and uh, real world dimensions inside Kangaroo. So we can start, for example, with one point, which in our analogy is, let's say, point A. Uh, we need to uh, create a line which is about 80 centimeters. So if you check, uh, if you check here, we have centimeters in Rhino. So I'm going to do a new file. We can also delete this one. Okay. So point. I'm defining the first point here. According to um, using the line as the L component, we can create a line in Z direction, which is about 80 centimeters because it's the current length of our cable. 80, here. Of course, since we want to go downward, we can put a negative value here. Okay. In this case, our discretization, since we have A, so we have our spring here, and then we have B. So in uh, 
this particular system, we just have one single spring. So this is 80 centimeters. Let me delete this. If you remember, after the discretization, we always have to get lines and points. Oh, with endpoints. Okay. So basically, we can use, let's say, a sphere component in order to check. This is the start point, and this one is the end point. OK. So this is the discretization step. And now we have to define the particle spring system. OK, so lines in, uh, into springs and points into particles. So we can go in kangaroo, forces once again, springs from line. As I mentioned before, this one goes here, and this one goes here. We always have to do this double connection. Line goes to connection and rest length. But now we can define this value here, which is stiffness. Now, we don't have specific units uh, when uh, we go, uh, we can, when we define uh, uh, like values inside kangaroo if you for example over the mouse you don't have any kind of units here but if we come back in our problem here we defined this is actually an original data of our system we have stiffness which is equal to two newton on centimeter so here we can just put two so it's always important to have uh, consistent units. Now, for example, I have Newton on centimeters. My length is 80 centimeters. So this one and this one, they are consistent. Of course, I cannot use meters, like I cannot put 0 0.8 meters and here I have centimeters. So we, have, we need to have consistent units. OK. So unary force, you can find it in forces, unary force here. We need to apply the force on the lower point like this. So I'm going to connect this one here. Let me use bifocals, which is always useful for. OK. Z direction. And now I go here. As you can see, we have 100 Newton. Once again, this is a starting like value of our problem. And I can, since it's Newton, so it is consistent with other like units that we have here, I can put 100. So let me check again, 100 Newton. OK, so that's the way we define like physics units in Kangaroo. Basically, we don't have like speci a specific request from the software, but we just have to uh, create consistent, once again, units as you see here. So centimeters and Newton, basically, uh, they are our units. So um, so we have springs. Um, sorry, it's important to negative. OK, we want to go downward. And we just need to define uh, the anchor point. The anchor point is the start value here. So you can connect this one. 
Okay. And then kangaroo physics. So the usual thing, right click here, flatten, right click here, flatten, always like that. You to merge the springs and forces and they go here. Anchor point here. Okay. So Per output, timer, and toggle. Like this, and like this. We want to simulate the behavior of our line, so line is connected here into geometry. So if I double click now this one, if I trigger, as you can see, we have an elongation of our original curve. Let me come back here. And I'm going to analyze the length of my curve like this. Of course, the starting value is 80. We can also, let me change, the um, font setting, so will be okay. Okay, eighty. Right click and like. Okay, so eighty is the original length. So once again, my idea is like I want to show you that actually um, kangaroo follows perfectly the Hooke's law. So now I'm running the simulation and I will get a final. Um, like um, length of 130 centimeters. Why? Because from the Hooke's equation, we can see that 50 centimeters is the elongation of our cable under this precise uh, set of conditions. So 100 Newton and two Newton on centimeters uh, in terms of stiffness. If I come back here, let me change this one. Okay, and as you can see here, it will it will perfectly stops at one hundred and thirty. Okay, here it is. So once again. In order to demonstrate that kangaroo follows the Hooke's law, so it's a, it is based on uh, physical laws, and also how to define forces and, and, and in general also stiffness, how to define units inside the software. So let's say, for example, if you want to, if you have a cable and it is divided into let's say 10 segments. They are not exactly 10, but let's assume that they are 10. And you want to define the unary force component. So when we put, when we have unary force and you wonder which is the actual value that we have to put inside force. It's very simple. Actually, you have to analyze the overall weight of our cable, let's say that this one has a weight of 100 Newton, I mean the whole cable. If we have 10 particles, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, okay, 10, you basically have to define, divide 100 Newton by 10 particles, and so we get 10 Newton. So it means that on each particle we have 10 Newton. So that's the way to define like real life loads in Kangaroo. You don't have to rely on the 9.8 uh, value that you can see set inside the component. As you can see here, we have 0, 0, minus 9.8. So the only way is like dividing the overall weight uh, by the number of existing particles on your system.
Okay. Okay, let me change once again. Let me. Okay. Now I want to show you how to simulate, for example, uh, behavior of an elastic membrane. Okay, so we can start from. Uh, This is a surface. Okay, let's do it, sorry, in uh, X, Y. Okay. Okay, I can select my surface. Right-click, reparameterize. It's always a good habit. Even if we are changing, let's say, the object complexity, so now we are dealing with a membrane, no longer with a simple cable, the workflow is always the same. The first thing to do is like a discretization of this surface into a um, set of points and lines. It's super simple because basically we need to convert this surface into a mesh. Um, we can use, for example, the mesh surface component. I connect this one here and let me divide, for example, in 12. Let me use bifocals. Okay, so mesh surface. So we converted a surface into a mesh, and now we need to extract the mesh vertices and edges. Uh, it's important to, uh, if you um, don't have Weaverbird, you have to do it, so you have to download it. Weaverbird is a, is a collection of uh, tools developed by Giulio Piacentino in order to manage meshes and subdivision surfaces within Grasshopper's interface. So uh, in extract, we can find many uh, components for extracting, uh, for example, the mesh edges. Let me turn off the preview of this one. As you can see, they are basically lines. And always in extract, we have the Weaver birds versus this component. We can connect this one here. They are points. Let me turn off the preview of this one. Okay, so once again, discretization step terminates here. Okay, second step, particle spring system. As usual, lines into springs. So let's go in uh, kangaroo, forces, springs from line. This one goes here and this one goes here. So you have to connect lines to connection and rest length always we can like skip all the other um, uh, input right now unary force in order to define uh, let's see weights z direction and right now just an arbitrary value if you want to put once again a real time a real sorry a real world um, weight we should know the actual weight of the overall object dividing by the number of particles and that's it. And so you will get the actual value to put here. Okay, 
Now we need to find the uh, to calculate the anchor points. For example, we can uh, suspend, we can um, um, support, sorry, our membrane on the um, four corners. Uh, in order to do that, the easiest way is to go here. We can use a component which is called deconstruct direct connected here. And here, let me turn off the preview. And from vertices, we can find one, two, three, four. As you can see, and probably you are you are, mm, are wondering why I like um, did extract the points from the original nerves and not from the collection of vertices that I'm here because it was easier. And for kangaroo, it's important that this point is exactly placed in the same position of one of our particles. Since we have a precise particle here, I can put something here. And so this one, I, this one is coincident with one of my particles. And so I can use it as an anchor point. Um, in other words, if I want, for example, if I anchor my membrane, if I want to anchor here, is not possible because we don't have any kind of particle in this place. So anchor points and forces, they should be defined exactly on top of one of our particles here. Let me come back. Kangaroo. So once again, kangaroo physics, flatten and flatten important to merge together this one here anchor points they go here and finally timer And toggle set to true. Now, since we are simulating a mesh in geometry, as I mentioned before, you can put lines or meshes. We can directly connect the mesh coming from mesh surface. So this one goes here. And also put a mesh component. So if you trigger the toggle, you see this kind of effect and me. Okay, turn off the preview. So once again, I can trigger this one and this one. Now, for example, if you uh, we can play the stiffness here in this way. I can double click. We can analyze the length of this of, of this set of lines, and we can multiply them by a value between zero and one. Do this one to one. Okay. When I do something like this. Okay, so I'm analyzing the line length and I'm multiplying them by one connected here. So this um, this definition is the same of doing this. Okay, nothing changes. But now I'm triggering once again. And then I'm playing with this parameter. So basically we are like reducing the curve length, creating a kind of tension, getting a minimal surface like that. So in terms of like spring, basically we have A, B, 
and we are reducing basically we are reducing okay so this is our spring we are like reducing the spring length by playing with just one parameter this one ranging between zero and one okay it's also important to say that even if you are if we are like dealing with a mesh which looks like a continuous object actually we are simulating the behavior of a um, of a net because if i once again if i um, turn on the simulation here as you can see our mesh faces they are originally like square they become like a, a diamond as you can see here it happens because actually we are simulating a, a net a mesh itself so it's not uh, an object with a material continuity if you want to simulate for example um let's say a, um a rectangular membrane made by let's say rubber for example so we don't have space but we, we have a kind of con material continuity inside every like um, mesh phase we need to simulate this kind of uh, continuity creating uh, crosses inside each mesh so in order to create this kind of like diagonal stiffness we can do it in a super easy way so from mesh surface first of all let me turn off this guy here from mesh surface we need to use a component which is called um, mesh explode mesh explode comes from uh, um, mesh edit plugin so it's not um, um, an original component, a uh, uh, native component, but this is um, it comes from Mesh Edit plugin. So if I have my original mesh, I can explode it into a set of individual faces. So if you check here, we have like individual faces. We need to explode the mesh in order to calculate the vertices. So once again, weaver birth vertices component. And that's important in order to have the mesh vertices organized per face. So as you can see here, we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3. It means that we have our um, vertices organized by faces. And that's important because we can uh, use list item connected here. As you, as you probably already know, you can uh, zoom in and you can extract the individual items for each face. And finally, with line from A to B, Like this so connecting zero and two and then one and three this is a simple strategy well-known strategy if you are familiar with data tree in grasshopper in order to create a set of crosses inside our mesh so my idea now is like turning this kind of net simulation into a rubber continuous membrane simulation so i'm uh, sorry in order to do that we need to use another spring component it's important to be well organized in uh, kangaroo i always suggest to put forces in uh, let's say in a kind of uh, single column like this so springs from line 
we can uh, merge this one, this one. It's important to flatten this one in order to have uh, to organize data into a single data flow. Okay, like this. And this one goes as usual in rest length again. Okay, because from merge we are getting a set of lines. This one goes into D3. So now we have, just for like synthesizing everything, we have a set of springs in this direction, this direction, but also in diagonal. And by default, as you can see here, we have a, a stiffness about 1,000. Let's put 1,000 once again here. Oh, sorry. OK, let me turn off the preview of all this stuff. OK, as you can see here, we have a behavior which is closer we have a kind of bending resistance now. Uh, we are simulating, simulating something like a rubber membrane or a piece of paper because we have this kind of diagonal stiffness. If I put this one to zero, we are coming back to the net simulation that we had before, as you can see here. Of course, you can change also the, the unary force in order to control the deformation, as you can see here. OK, for example, this principle, this kind of membrane simulation, was used by Sergio Musmeci in order to define this. Uh, the only picture that you can find online, for example, is the is a system, is a frame that he created in order to um, creating a deformation of a rubber membrane in order to find the shape, the, the bridge shape before calculating it. Um, I was the correlator of a thesis work about uh, the Musmeci bridge, and um, I want to show you a video which is uh, which is very important for us to. Uh, in order to create the bridge itself. Uh, this is a video which, show, uh, which shows how uh, the analog system was created by Musmeci, starting from a rectangular rubber elastic membrane, as you can see here. OK. So as you can see, we have a uh, kind of evenly distributed like a net. Uh, it was basically um, like a draw on top of it. So with a set of uh, pulleys and clips, the membrane was put in tension like this. In order to get a uh, first definition of uh, the bridge shape. As you can see here, this system was actually used from um, by Musmech in order to, with two weights and this kind of pulleys, it created like a uh, uniform, uh, uniform force acting on this clip here and this set of clip here in order to have constant forces in uh, this part and this part here. But when he put in tension the membrane, and we also, when we simulated this kind of the same system, we realized that uh, there are many areas with no tension inside. For example, if you can see my mouse in this area here, or this area here, there is not kind of stress inside. You can uh, like feel it because, um, you can actually touch it and you realize that no tension is inside here and here. You can see it now. Okay, so the second step is like removing part of the mesh that they don't give any kind of 
contribution in terms of like uh, stresses okay and finally we cut and also musmeji cut the membrane in order to get a final shape which is really closer to the one that he created years before okay and it was the first like uh, attempt and once again i can show you here this is the only image that you can find on the on the internet right now but basically it's the same system that we like uh, simulated again in order to create the, the shape now um this is very important this kind of um introduction because in order to create the a digital model of uh, Musmechis bridge, we need to uh, create a specific starting mesh, which in a way simulates uh, the cutting. We don't have sea source actually, but we are going to do uh, in, a, in our mesh. We need to prepare the starting mesh in order to uh, find the proper final configuration. I saw many like simulation online on the internet of of this bridge and there is a lack of information in the starting mesh so the shape the final shape is similar but not, not exactly the same because it's important to understand this cutting procedure which prepares the simulation itself and the algorithm the algorithm itself um let's do just a couple of minutes of break and then uh, we can uh, start with the bridge which is you know is the focus on the on uh, of the webinar itself
again can you hear me guys okay okay please let me know if you can also see the the screen Okay, cool. Okay, I hope um, after the webinar, we will check if um, the video on YouTube uh, uh, has a good quality. Um, I'm sorry for um, live streaming too. Today, it's a bit difficult because, as you probably already know, there is a lot of traffic uh, and YouTube also um, like sl slow down a bit the, 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 um, the streaming itself. So uh, we will try to, uh, we, are, we are also recording everything in high quality directly from our screen. So uh, we, we are going to check it later. If um, it's not working for us, uh, we can uh, like upload uh, a high quality one so um just be patient okay so now we can start with the we can start with the musbechi bridge so as i showed you before the most tricky part let's say the more but, but the most important one uh, is like cutting an original membrane is not important to have the let's say the the actual dimensions once again when you are inside kangaroo you are not simulating the real bridge you are not playing with the with the actual material with the uh, actual dimension but you are in the moose match in this case laboratory and you are simulating the uh, deformation of the rubber membrane so that's the, like, let's say the philosophy and the methodology that we are using when we are in kangaroo. So let's start with a simple rectangular surface. No tricks, this is just a simple rectangular surface. I just have a couple of reference uh, for the um, symmetry axis. Um, in order to, the first thing to do is like, of course, is getting the surface with the surface component. Like this, reparameterize. We can also turn off the preview of um, of our mesh, and then we can use once again mesh surface. This one goes here, and let's uh, divide it into fifty one by fifty three. This is actually important in terms of in order to have the sorry the um, 51 sorry 23 beg your pardon okay that's good in order to have a proper set of subdivisions um, uh, that are useful for the shape that we want to create now now we have a part to do which is in uh, rhino because we actually have to define a set of curves that will uh, allow us to cut the original mesh in order to get um, a good start point for the membrane simulation. Now, uh, it looks probably not complicated because it's not complicated at all, but maybe it looks completely um, not obvious why uh, I'm going to do something like that. But basically it comes from the membrane simulation that I showed you before, the video of the analog system that we actually recreated, and a lot of trials and error. Um, the first thing to do is like creating a curve. So we have to start from, this is our geometry, the symmetry, and then the axis here. And we have to count four square enough, starting from here. So we have one, two, three, four like this, and you can create a simple line, something similar, okay? You don't have to touch, absolutely. 
the edge you should you should stay a bit like on the right like this and then you can uh you have to count one two three four five six element like this so i can do something like this okay let me go in ortho so like this then like this and then two elements Okay, and then we can go until we reach this line here. Okay, this one, um, I can, uh, like, we can join together. I can remove this part here, so like this, plus like this, join curves, okay? So once again, we have one, two, three, four and a half, and then one, two, three, four, five, um six like this and then here one and two this should be like a kind of offset curve this um operation can be also you can also do it in grasshopper but will be way way more complicated to do it in grasshopper then when we have this guy here we can uh, um, we can like do a mirror okay like this and then like this it's important to join them together okay this is just one closed curve now okay now starting from this guy here we need to create, um, actually this area will be used later on in order to cut our mesh. We can also do something immediately. We can also mirror this one using this axis like this. Okay. Once again, it's important to stay like, uh, to do a kind of offset. And then we are going to do another thing here. So using a rectangle, you jump just one square here. And then with the same logic, we need to create this rectangle and uh, we need to have eight squares. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, something like this. Okay. I can select this one now and I can copy it like this leaving just one uh, space here it's important not to okay so one two three four five six seven eight and we are like in a way selecting two levels here then we have one space that we need and also I'm going to do something similar because basically, I don't know if this is clear or not, we are going to, let's say, delete away all the things, all the squares, all the faces inside those curves. So I want to get rid of this guy here, I want to get rid of those cells, those ones, those ones, okay. Now I can do mirror like this okay. and then a mirror of this guy okay basically they are all the uh, curves that we are going to use for deleting self um, mesh faces so the faces inside those curves will be deleted so what we're, uh, we are going to do now is like collecting them we can also create a layer call it cutting curves and we can collect them together
and they are inside one layer. So, curve component. So we can do that, which is easier. Select objects and then set multiple curves. And we have 12 curves now. Okay, now there is a way in Grasshopper for like removing mesh faces according to different logic. So uh, the component is called call faces. It calls, removes uh, faces from a mesh according to a specific logic. So we can uh, uh, do something like that. We have those curves, we can call them uh, Cutting curves. Say that we have 12. We can explode our, our mesh. So we can use mesh explode. When you explode a mesh, it means that your mesh is like split into a set of individual faces. And then I'm going to calculate the mesh area. The component mesh area gives us the center of each face. And finally, there is a component which is called point in curves. Be careful, let's go here. In curve analysis, you have point in curve and point in curves, plural. It's important to use point in curves in order to understand which one of those points is inside our curves. So I can do something like this. And finally, we can select this one here. So we want to cull, to remove faces according to a specific logic. Now, the um, point in curves gives us in our output, it says, uh, zero outside, one coincident to um, inside. So basically, with so by connecting this one here, so the P um, allows us to set like this. Okay, so as you can see, let me turn off the preview of this one and let me turn off the preview of cutting curves okay so we got this kind of shape which is a simplified let me come back to the video if i come back here we are talking about a simplified version of this Thing that you can see here, which is the unrolled mesh that we got after the like the membrane cutting. Okay, so this is the the first thing to do. Now, so basically, this one is our also use a mesh component like this. In general, when I have to Let's say when I have a component which is important for me, I can group, I usually group it and I create the oops, blob outline. I cannot do it because I have the bifocals. Anyway, like this, I know that this one is a, is a critical component in my definition. So let me turn off the preview of this one. Okay. So this is our starting membrane. Now we need to define. Uh, um, um, set up, sorry, uh, of course, we need to extract lines and, and uh, vertices. So the, uh, the edges, so they are important. So um, weaver bird mesh edges, you can find it anyway in uh, WB extract. Okay, this is our, once again, this is our discretization phase as usual. And now we are going to define the particle spring system. 
one of these, sorry. And then uh, we can extract also the vertices. We can also do it later on. But we were built vertices component from here. So as you can see, we are like extracting from our mesh edges and particle and um, points that will become uh, particles of our system. Okay, now let me turn off the preview of this one and let me open this one. Okay, we need to define the anchor points. Now, I want to anchor my system like here, 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 and here. If I turn on the points once again, as you can see, basically I'm going to select only this one and this one this guy and this guy here this one this one this one this one so basically with the same technique that i used before i mean with the curve methodology let's use another curve component right click set multiple curves i'm going to select this one this one and this one okay and i'm going to call it four points and cores because they will become anchor points. They are four, and they stay here. Let me turn off the preview of this one. But we need to, um, in a way, we need to collect them from our set of vertices. So with the same logic, we, so with point on curves, sorry, point in curves, point in curves, this is our curve. Um, they are our vertices. And now we need to use the component call pattern. I don't know if you already know it. I hope so. Uh, it's a selector in Grasshopper that selects objects within a list L according to a let's say a logic or in this case with an inclusion logic so if our points stay inside the curves they are selected so like this Okay, then we have to select other uh, anchors like this. Now, basically, I'm going to wrap, let's say, this part here and this part here. Okay, and also like this. So I'm going to collect all this like row of like faces and also this one. Okay, so we have one, two, three, four big elements. So we can uh, create another curve component. So one, two, three, four. And I'm going to call them points, anchor points to pull. Points to pull because in our system, they will be pulled in order to create the physical simulation. And once again, we have point in curves. Select this one from our vertices once again. Then call pattern. This is our and this one goes here.
okay so using this logic we can we are going to select all those points they will be used in order to let me turn off this one okay so points that you can see right now in the screen they will be pulled vertically later on okay so we have our edges the edges they will become our like um, springs of course it's always important to put a line component just to be sure that they are lines and not curves but it's not possible that we have curves in this case so springs from line as usual this one goes here and this one goes here but we are going to use the system showed you before so i can multiplicate the curve length by a value which is let's say between 0 0.5 sorry one goes here i set this one to one this slider goes from one to 0 0.5 down to 0 0.5 and i connect this one here once again when b is set to one it's equivalent to do this thing here and finally we need to uh, define an anchor points so i can use a merge component between okay my four sorry uh, they are actually eight anchor points they will stay fixed so they stay like this and now the magic trick we can use a move component between my anchor points to be pulled later so i'm going to pull this one z And this one goes here so if we go in a perspective mode i'm going to define a slider between 0 and 30. as you can see we can move those points so if you remember the physical system that i simulated we basically they are like the pulleys pulling actually the by clips the membrane upward but it's very important that this value is set to zero when you start the simulation this value should be must be set to zero when you before starting the simulation so they are fixed they can we cannot move these uh, these eight points but we can move them like this okay uh finally we can use the kangaroo physics component so once again kangaroo okay kangaroo physics good habit right click here flatten right click here flatten we can connect this one here and the anchor points they go here the usual timer we can set it to 10 milliseconds and also the goal in order to trigger the simulation like this finally we want to simulate of course the mesh so we need to directly connect our mesh here in geometry okay i can turn off the preview of this one and finally i have an output mesh from this one
let me turn off the preview of everything. Okay, now if I trigger this one, nothing happened. But now I can play with this parameter here, as you can see, in order to create a, let's say, a kind of planar tension. This is planar. So once again, the trigger this guy, and then I move down this one. Actually, we need to add another force in our system because if you remember, the simulation was done using a rubber membrane, not a net. So we need to apply, do you remember the crosses in our um, mesh faces in order to simulate something which, is, uh, which has a kind of bending resistance. So the same, exactly the same procedure that I did before so I can explode my mesh here. Vertices component. Paste item. Then I can extract 0, 1, 2, 3. And finally, line from A to B. first set of diagonals and second set of diagonals here. Now it becomes a new spring component, so a new springs from line. We can merge them together. Flatten. This one goes here, and this one goes here. And this one can be actually merged. This one and this one, like this. So in terms of forces, we have just two set of springs. The diagonals that give uh, that give the um, bending resistance, and uh, this one which controls uh, the membrane itself. So once again, if I double click here, I can have this effect. As you can see now, the deformation is uh, is, is a bit different. They're different because uh, we cannot deform into a diamond the single faces thanks to this new spring. As I told you, this one should be set to zero when you trigger the component. And now we can move this one a bit. We will get this kind of effect. And we are actually simulating uh, the pulling system of the analog uh, device I showed you before. Now, our mesh is, doesn't have a number of faces, which is enough for in order to have something which is super smooth, but not wor don't worry, because in Grasshopper, and once again in Weaverbird, if you go in Weaverbird and then you go in uh, Transform, uh, sorry, in Sub-D, you can find this component, which is called Weaverbird Catmull clark Subdivision. So you can connect this one here. Let me... This is a smoother we can change the level of subdivision from 0 to 3 0 means that you don't have any kind of uh, Okay, and finally in S, 
if I right click this one, you can select, if I go in S, we have fixed, smooth, or corner fix. If I click on this one, basically we are fixing all the uh, edges of our system, but we can right click here and we can go in corner fixed. So as you can see, this like nice shape doesn't happen because we actually cut our mesh like precisely like that. So once again, let me come back here. As you can see, we need to as I mentioned before, we need to put this one to zero before doing the, um, before like running the simulation. Now I can play with this one. The second spring, once again, here we have 1000 as a stiffness value. So if you want to remove the effect, okay, now the square, they become like, once again, like diamond. So by changing this by this value, we are actually creating, um, uh, so the shear resistance, which gives us this kind of shape. And finally, I can also, now I'm like, I just stop the simulation. So it's not running anymore. Uh, let me go here. We can also create a thickness. We have another component from Weaverbed, which is called uh, Mesh Thicken. We can connect this one here. Let's give like 1.5. And then you can, for example, you can bake it. And this technique actually allows to get also this particular shape in the bridge, which is this kind of like torsion here. And as I mentioned before, I in the there are several several like um, tutorials um, on on this bridge, and in, in general they lack about this kind of detail because you can only get it if you. And also my first videos they have this kind of problem, my my first like tutorials on on this bridge because you need to like to do this kind of cutting here in order to create this shape here. You can also do something like this. That, that one was like just like prepared before. Of course, we are like describing just uh, one, uh, you know, span of the bridge. You can also, you can try by yourself to create like more than one span. And once again, this method is like a translation in the digital realm of the analog simulation that pioneers of form finding they, uh, they have done during the years. And Kangaroo is a tool allowing us to simulate this kind of um, methodology. I don't see your chat right now, but I'm sure that Probably there are questions about how to like uh, simulate the deformation the, of this bridge or of, uh, of structure. You have to play with other kind of tools. One of them is like Caramba or Millipede. And so you can translate this object into a real structure and you can apply the real world forces, materials. Uh, um, and then you can actually simulate and calculate the 
deformation, uh, bending, um, bending moment, for example, and, and so on. So let me just summarize a bit what we, as you can see, is a basically is a super simple like kangaroo like workflow. We have the original surface converted into a mesh, and then using uh, those system of curves, we cut the mesh in order to get the proper geometry, the proper mesh, which is this one. Let me show you. Okay, so everything start thanks to this. So in a way the the most complex part is like uh, figuring out how to create the original shape the starting mesh in order to apply the deformation later. And then we have four set of anchor points. They are eight actually in order to fix to the ground the mesh and other many. So they are, let me show you, the anchor points, they don't move of course, and they Actually, they are anchor points, but pulled away in order to simulate the loads. Of course, you can also play with the geometry like this. It should be possible to. Okay, so that's it. Let me come back to the to the chat, let me, okay, hand sharing.